To that end, keep alert with all perseverance. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus repeatedly told his disciples what lay ahead for him. It was the purpose for which he had come, calling himself the Son of Man, a title for the Messiah from the prophet Daniel. Jesus said, The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. Teach us, Lord, to follow you in faithfulness. As the time drew near for Jesus to finish his earthly ministry and to be taken up to heaven, he turned to Jerusalem and to the cross. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. When our days are difficult and challenging, Lord Jesus, help us to keep our focus on you. As Jesus began to take his final steps toward the cross, he said, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus, in faithfulness, you look up the cross for the sake of our salvation. Set your cross before us to guide us to persevere in faith. Please remain standing for our first hymn.
Lord Jesus, you set your face toward Jerusalem at the time of, as the time of your death drew near. You did not turn away from what lay ahead. In Gethsemane, you prayed that your Father's will, not yours, would be done. You were faithful to your purpose and obedient to your Heavenly Father, obedient to the point of death on a cross. Lead us by your Spirit to be faithful to you in our thoughts, words, and actions, that our lives bear witness to your steadfast love. Amen. You may be seated. first reading is from Micah chapter 6. Will the Lord be pleased with, the, with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 6. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and, as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, where in Aramaic is, is called Golgotha. Where, there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
gracious Lord, tonight we are drawn to the cross which you have blessed. And you come to us this evening through word and sacrament with healing gifts for our souls distressed. And we find our, our rest and we find our life in you. And so we pray tonight that you, Christ crucified, would come. Speak, O Lord, for your people are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text uh, for this evening is uh, from the gospel that was read just a couple of minutes ago, the gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter, and I would like to read verses 16 and 17 again. It talks about uh, Christ's perseverance all the way to death on the cross. So he, Pilate, delivered him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross, the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. This is our text. Grace and mercy and peace be to each of you, my dear Christian friends. Welcome to our fifth Wednesday Lenten service. It's hard to believe how quickly these five weeks have gone by. We've been guided to the cross in forgiveness, we've been guided to the cross in love, we've been guided to the cross in peace, guided to the cross in hope, and tonight we are guided to the cross in perseverance. There are many times in all of our lives, I believe, when we need to persevere. We've all faced different challenges in our lives. Some of those challenges are fun challenges, challenges that we set before ourselves, goals that we want to to reach, but there are other challenges in life where we need to persevere in the most difficult of circumstances in our lives. In the more uh, fun context of, of challenges, we have games, we have our sports, we want to persevere to the end, we want our teams to persevere to the end. When I was in my teens and even early 20s, I would go out on a hike or I would find a a mountain to to climb. And in Colorado, there are 14, or there are actually 53 peaks that are over 14,000 feet high. And it's a pretty elite club for those who have climbed each of those 53 peaks and made it to the summit. Uh, I had hoped to do that in my teenage years. I actually only was able to make it to the summit of about eight or nine of them. But I can remember that uh, the challenges, you know, it's almost sundown and you still see that peak up there and you want to get to the top. And sometimes you're using ropes and back in the day, pitons and carabines to get up there and... uh, it was hard, but you persevered until you would get to the top, and it always felt so good when you had met the challenge and you had reached the summit. But sometimes those things come at us in different ways. Maybe it's persevering to get, uh, to pass a test, to to get through a, a difficult course in school, to graduate from a particular program. A friend of mine uh, was in law school, and uh, he needed to take the bar exam five different times until he finally passed. He failed, he failed, he failed, he failed, but he persevered until he finally passed the bar exam, and he is a well-known and highly respected attorney to this day. But other, for other people, it might be even more challenging. Maybe you're taking care of an elderly parent, and you have incredible challenge be- challenges before you in, in taking care of of this elderly parent that so needs your care, at least until, until you need to find uh, uh, another resource that can provide the kind of care that you could provide. Or maybe you have a child that has incredible challenges in your life, and you persevere and persevere and persevere because you want to make sure that this child's needs are met, and you know that you, are, you and your family are the best ones to offer that kind of care. 
And that's what perseverance means. It means continuing on, even when things are really difficult, even when things are extremely hard and, and seemingly impossible, when things look so dire that it's, it seems that you will never, ever reach the end, but you persevere and you persevere and you persevere until the goal is accomplished. Perseverance is a theme of Lent, actually. We may never have thought much about it that way, but I, I think that it is a common theme in Lent, and it begins with Jesus 40 days in, in the wilderness, and he's tempted by the devil. And it's when Jesus is at his most vulnerable, when he's at his weakest, he's tired, he's hungry, and he is exhausted. And we know that it was after 40 days, it was on the 40th day that Satan came in and attacked him because after this battle with Satan in the wilderness, what happens? Finally, the angels come and attend to Jesus. And that was the end of his, of his wilderness struggle. That was the end of his fast. But Satan attacked him when Jesus was at his most vulnerable. Jesus, I know it's been 40 days. I know you're starving to death. You're so weak that you can't even take another step. All you have to do is turn this stone into bread. <laughs> Man shall not live by bread alone, Jesus said, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Okay, Jesus. I know you want to be a king. But do you really want to go through all of the trouble to get to where you need to go? Do you really need to die for the sins of the world? Do you really need to be crucified, to suffer on a cross, to be a king? All you have to do right now, you can have all the kingdoms of the world, and I can crown you as a king right now if you just bow down and worship me. Jesus said, worship the Lord thy God and him only shall you serve. Okay, Jesus, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give up that easily on you. I know you think you can play Superman. <laughs> you see that temple over there? Just get up on the top and throw yourself down. After all, you say that your holy angels will bear you up, but they will carry you. Thou shalt not tempt the name. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Yeah, he persevered, and he kept persevering and persevering all the way to the cross. Just think about Gethsemane. Here he is in the garden praying, and he's praying with such, such fervor that his own sweat becomes like drops of blood falling to the ground. He journeyed on even in his turmoil, knowing that the suffering that he was going to experience was the will of God and was necessary in order to achieve his ultimate goal of dying for the sins of the world. Or consider for a moment the rejection that Jesus felt during his ministry when people turned away from his message of salvation and him. Even the people of his own hometown rejected him. They wanted to chase him out of town and they wanted to chase him over a cliff. Jesus turned around and he walked right through that, that crowd. He walked right through that resistance and continued with his preaching and with his teaching and with his healing. And how his heart must have been breaking when he saw his own disciple Judas betray him with a kiss on his own cheek. And the soldiers came to arrest him. Or think about that crown of thorns that was placed on his head, not just placed there gently, but thrust into the flesh of his skull. Think about the whips on his back, the scourging that literally ripped the skin, the flesh from, from his bones, and he took each lash. And the people at the pavement in front of Pontius Pilate shouted out, crucify him, crucify him, and yet he didn't turn away. He took on himself their painful intents with, with hardly a wince. 
And that takes us to the cross. The people cried out, crucify him. And so they did. Historians call crucifixion the most cruel apparatus of torture and death in the history of humankind. And yet Jesus took the nails and he heard the scoffing and he bore the pain of the life literally being drained away from his body. And he felt the weight of the sins of the entire world upon himself. Not just the sins of the world out there, but your sins and my sins, the weight of our sins right here within the walls of this sanctuary. Jesus bore the weight of that on his own shoulders. You see, the cross is the ultimate sign of perseverance. And we cannot even begin to imagine the pain and the suffering that Jesus went through in order to save us from sin and death. He is the prime example in our lives of someone who persevered against all odds and yet kept moving closer and closer and closer to his own death. But Christ's perseverance on the cross doesn't just give us a prime example to follow. The crucifixion of Jesus, his death on the cross, is, is the very foundation of our faith, which is why we preach Christ crucified. And that's where it all begins, and that's ultimately where it ends. It ends in, in resurrection, of course, but the resurrection could never have occurred without the crucifixion of Jesus, our Savior. And it sounds so simple, and yet it is so profound that against all the other messages of the world, and some of the messages that we hear within our, our own ranks or even that come from our own hearts and souls, the bottom line is Christ crucified. Christ crucified for you and for me. And what that means for us is that we are Christ's followers, and that as Christ's followers, we are not quitters. We are not quitters when it comes to our faith, that we go to the distance with Him, that we don't turn back to our old ways of sinning, that we look to the goal of heaven with Him that, uh, that awaits us, even in the midst of and during our own sufferings. And so this comparison of Jesus' perseverance driving our own perseverance I think becomes even more clear to us when we, when we hear the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 12. When the Apostle Paul writes, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our own bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life. Paul, in writing those words, he is, writing, he is writing to new Christians who are facing persecution and even death for the confession of faith in Jesus. And they're persecuting or persevering for the sake of the cross of Christ. And that, that persevering for the sake of the cross of, of Christ was, was a life and death confession of faith. And yet these followers of Jesus persevered and many of them were martyred and yet their, their faith was revealed to those around them. Think of Paul and Silas, for example. Acts chapter 16. Here they are. They, they have been imprisoned for preaching the gospel. And they are in, chain, in chains within the prison walls. And what are they doing? 
Paul and Silas are singing hymns, and the hymns that they are singing become a witness to the pr other prisoners that are in that, in that jail. And then there's an earthquake, and the walls come tumbling down, and the chains, the shackles that, that are binding Paul and Silas, they, they break, and Paul and Silas are let free. And what does the prison guard do? He thinks that Paul and Silas have run away along with all of the other prisoners and he takes out his own sword and he's going to take his own life because he knows that he himself will be killed because the prisoners have escaped. And Paul and Silas come running up to him and they tell him, don't do that. And they minister to him and they share the gospel with him. And this jailer is baptized along with his whole family. And then the jailer, the very one who was more than willing to kill Paul and Silas and the other Christians that were in that prison cell, the next thing you know, after he and his family are baptized, the jailer and his entire family invite Paul and Silas to sit down and to have dinner with them. That's the witness of those people. That's the perseverance of those who are being persecuted. And yet, even in the midst of dire circumstances, they still give a solid witness to Christ and Christ crucified. And then there's Stephen. He's being stoned, and what does he do? He cries out. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And when you think about it, those are almost identical words to the words that Jesus spoke in his last moments, his last words on the cross. Father, unto you I commit my spirit. And how that must have been a witness to all of those who heard that testimony. And Paul most certainly was the very one who had gathered that group of rioters together to stone Stephen. Remember, Paul persecuted the church. And perhaps it was hearing those words, that confession of Stephen, that impacted Saul to become Paul and the chief apostle in the New Testament. And of course, we wonder how we would act if we were faced with such dire circumstances. It's hard to know, of course. But what we do know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what we do know as a fact is that we have Jesus on our side, that we have the crucified Christ who went the distance for us and never, ever looked back. His confidence and strength on the cross help us to have confidence and and strength when our faith is put to the test, when we're facing trials and tribulations, when we're facing sickness and sorrow and natural disaster and these human atrocities that are occurring all around us. The cross is a sign that the end of all pain and, and suffering will come when Christ, who was crucified and rose from the dead on Easter, returns to take us home to heaven. His perseverance for us will be complete when we arrive in that eternal realm where St. John the Divine writes, he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore for the former thing will have passed away. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, be guided to the cross again tonight and be guided to perseverance. Be guided to life now and eternally all through the loving perseverance of Jesus to death and to resurrection. May it be so for Jesus' sake.
Jesus, you set your face toward Jerusalem, where you would take up your cross for the sake of our salvation. In faithful obedience to your heavenly Father, you suffered and died to save us. Faithful Lord, as we follow you, set your cross before us to guide us in faithfulness. Lord Jesus, when we face difficult days in life, when we are filled with doubt or fear, strengthen us to persevere in faith and to hold fast to the hope and peace that you have brought us. Faithful Lord, as we follow you, set your cross before us to guide us in faithfulness. Lord Jesus, be present with those who face illness, pain, and grief, especially Janet Wiegman, Erica Williams, Jean Wells, Ben Bryant, Dorothy Mercer, Terry Parker, Brenda Johnson, Don Arthur, and Jackie Fuller. And we also pray for those that we now name silently in our hearts. <coughs> Comfort them through the promises of your word and keep them strong in faith. Guide us as we serve them in love. Faithful Lord, as we follow you, set your cross before us to guide us in faithfulness. Lord Jesus, keep us steadfast in the study of your word so that we will grow in faith, ready to defend the hope that is ours and to be our witnesses each day. Give us opportunities to speak to others about your redeeming death and triumphant resurrection so that in the power of the Spirit they too may come to follow you in faith. Faithful Lord, as we follow you, set your cross before us to guide us in faithfulness. Lord Jesus, faithful to your purpose and to your Father's will, you suffered and died to save us. Keep us steadfast in faith, walking in your footsteps until we live in your presence forever. Faithful Lord, as we follow you, Set your cross before us to guide us in faithfulness. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after he had eaten supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thanks be to God, the gifts of God, for the people of God. You may be seated.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul, now and unto life everlasting. Live in that peace and depart in that peace. Amen. Let us return thanks. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.